What's up, everybody? I'm back. Um, really fun uh, sequence of events have put me on stage today. I'm on stage. Oh, yeah, for all the people who haven't seen me in a hot minute, the team that won the Monty Sweepstakes, boom, North Hall. So, um, yeah, man, we're on a stage, and we get one of, like, you know, the people's favorite cue music. We got one of the people's favorite lectures. Let's see. Chicago Bulls. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, introducing from Gainesville, Georgia, your favorite A push teacher, internet sensation, John. Montesino! Yeah! Yes! Yes! It's hard to get more excited than this. It's hard. Man. Ladies and gentlemen. All right. <laughs> it's like it's on repeat already. All right. So um, today, man, today we got a super exciting um, lecture. Um, Y'all want to say hello to the, to the internet world? Yeah. Say what's up, everybody. Yo. Look at that. Look at that. I've been asking for years to be put on a stage, and they finally let me do it. So um, I figured if we're going to do anything, it should be this lecture here. Um, as far as our sectionalism bracket concerns, we're not going to waste the internet's time. Um, we're going to, you know, take care of that off camera, um, after we get done with all this today. Um, for my people out there on the World Wide Web, I know I'm over 200 subs and I don't have a merch line yet. One of these nerds here sitting out in the audience is going to come to my classroom and help me set up a merch line so that we can all have like Monty face shirts. It's gonna be sweet. If you have great ideas for merch, drop it in the comments below. Make sure you smash the like button, comment, subscribe. I make people laugh. All right. Do what? Hey, you know, you are what you are, right? You are what you are. All right, so, um, actually let's move this over here. Boom. All right, cool. Um, real quick recap of, of the stuff that we've been talking about. Um, I at least need to be able to see, be seen way over there. Let's take that. Boom. Yes. All right. Um, there's all our standards. We ain't got time because we got to entertain the people. Uh, <coughs> so. 1848, remember we've talked 1848 and we really have a lot of sectional tension brewing. Um, this free soil party, what are they all about? Uh, abolitionists but kind of not. what does that mean? Yeah, they're like, don't want it, they're not gonna. They don't want, they don't want slavery or something like that. They don't want slavery where? In the West where? Territories. Territories. No slavery in the territories. My guy. Um, and so that's going to be a big deal. We'll talk more about that today. Um, we talked about the you know things that are creating a lot of sectional tension. One of it is essentially like the genesis, if you will, of it is this uh, 49 California gold rush. Okay, and that's because California is what we've been calling the literal gold mine. All right. Compromise of 1850, we're trying to get Cali to in as a state before it goes off and, and kind of creates its own thing. Um, but this thing's going to create a lot of division and a lot of sectionalism. California coming in free, why is that going to cause problems? Upsets the balance. Upsets the balance where? Um, which, which part of the legislative branch? The Senate. The Senate, okay? Remember, because the House is always going to be dominated by the North. Um, Utah and New Mexico, all right? Utah and New Mexico are new territories open to slavery through what? Popular, Popular sovereignty. And for my people out there on the World Wide Web, what's wrong with the people? 
Stupid. You already knew that. All right. I've been saying that for years. People are just now starting to realize it. Um, and then, remember, we've got uh, the Fugitive Slave Laws. And you talk about things that are going to radicalize people. Man, those Fugitive Slave Laws are going to send people next level uh, radicalization. All right. Um, we talked about 1852. Remember, 1852, the, the South is threatening secession if the fugitive slave laws aren't enforced. Uh, we talked about that attempt for, for turning Cuba into a slave state. Uh, why does it make Pierce look bad? He looks like an imperialist. Yeah, he looks like an imperialist, right? Um, even though we're in the midst of manifest destiny. But we say it's different, therefore... It is, right? Uh, Kansas, Nebraska Act. This is Stephen Douglas's brainchild. It's, uh, it, well, what does it do to Kansas and Nebraska territories? Opens them up to slavery by popular sovereignty. This is a big change. In CCOT, this is a big change. What is the change? Yeah, all right. Missouri Compromise Line said this is always supposed to be free, and now we've just dropped the grenade into everybody's shared understandings, okay? Um, what happens to the political parties because of this Kansas Nebraska Act? Yeah, what happens to the Whigs? They're gone. Uh, we get two new political parties. What's one? Republicans. The Republicans are all about what? Abolition. They're all about abolition. What's our nativist political party? The know nothings. The know-nothings, all right? And so they're all in, um, and, and again, it's more and more division. Um, but hey, the people are gonna figure it out. How are the people doing with popular sovereignty? Yeah, they're literally fighting each other in Kansas, all right? We got that bloody civil war before the bloody civil war. Uh, whose job is it to make laws? The legislative branch. How's the legislative branch doing? It's the same thing out in, 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 in Kansas, right? You know, people are fighting. Um, we, uh, we see a lot of radicalization, okay? Um, we're playing this game of, of zero-sum politics, and when you have spicy memes and zero-sum politics where I can't win unless you lose, we get things like John Brown. All right. What did John Brown do at the Potawatomi River? <laughs> yeah, man. He just like, well, it's 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 serial killer level stuff, right? Um, but again, John Brown is a product of the times. Okay. Again, when you have this gross radicalization accompanied by the mindset of zero sum politics, of course, there's sectionalism, right? Um, we talked the election of 1856, saw super sectionalism going on. Um, the, the Republicans and the know-nothings are competing in the North. Uh, the South is threatening secession if the Republicans win. Why? Republicans are all about what? Abolition. Abolition. Okay. Um, we talked about the panic. We talked about the Dred Scott case. Okay. With Dred Scott. Um, is a slave still a slave in a free territory? Yes. Are free blacks citizens? No. No. All right. And how is, what, what's the best way to decide slavery in the territories? Pop, stop. We're screwed. All right. We're screwed. We got all four branches. All right. All four branches, the legislative, the executive. Oh, by the way, the executive is a what? Dope -face. He's a doe face, which is a what? Northern with pro-South views. So between the legislative, the executive, the judicial, and we, the people, we're screwed, man. We're screwed. Um, we talked the Compton Constitution. We talked about how Kansas still can't figure it out. They've still got incredible problems going on in terms of, of having legitimate governments. Um, it's causing a division in, in the Democratic Party. Uh, we talked the Lincoln-Douglas debates. Who probably wins the debates? Lincoln. Then how does Douglas win the actual election? Yeah. Is it we the people voting for our senators yet? No. No. It's still the state government. And sad is, is the big dog, right? He's one of the leaders of the Democratic Party. All right. Um, and then we talked about John Brown. What's John Brown going to do at Harper's Ferry? Yeah. 
He's, uh, he's, he's, he's raiding a federal arsenal with the intent to do what? Free slaves. Yeah, you know, free slaves. Um, what's more important than John Brown's actual raiding of a federal arsenal? The reaction. He claims insanity. Well, more so the reaction, all right? Remember, he's going to die both a martyr and a villain, all right? And all this is going to do is further radicalize a whacked out populace, okay? Um, now, that brings us to our favorite election. Oh, please work. Please work. Oh, no. I did it again. I did it again. Come on, work, work, work. Oh, yeah. We're back in, in business. Now. This election, we're going to do a little bit different than, than we, we, we really have been um, in the past. Uh, we've kind of glossed over them, but this is a big election. And so we're going to spend time talking about each and every little piece of this thing. All right. Um, starting with the conventions. All right. We'll start with the Democrats first. OK, we'll start with the Democrats first. The Democrats um, are, are, are breaking up. OK, they're breaking up between the radicalization of, of, of events like John Brown and, and Dred Scott and the continuation of bleeding Kansas. The Democrats are splitting. OK, the Democrats are splitting, but they're going to get together. They need to show unity. OK, that's really what they're trying to do is they're trying to show unity in Charleston, South Carolina. That's gonna be incredibly difficult to do in Charleston because Charleston is the land of all the secessionists. Okay? But that's where they're getting together. All right? Now, what makes it even more difficult to show unity is states like Alabama are sending their delegates with instructions to get the Alabama platform. All right? The Alabama platform said that both the candidate and the, the platform must protect slavery in the territories. Okay? Popsov is not good enough. Both the candidate and the platform have to protect slavery in the territories. We take a look at this map of Alabama. What are we looking at? A lot of red. Right? And what does the blue mean? Slaves, we can see, you know, it ha Alabama has a monstrous slave population. It quite literally is the backbone of their economy. Do we see why slavery is so important to a state like Alabama? Now, Alabama's delegates have been instructed to rule or ruin the convention, meaning that if they don't get both the platform and the candidate that they want, ruin the convention. Is it going to be easy to show unity here? No. Okay. Now, Democrats aren't dummies. They're going to show up and, and they are going to try to piece everything together. Um, they're going to start with their, with their platform first. Okay? They start with their platform first. Um, and because of the, the sharp division, what they're going to do is they're going to take one person from each state. And at this time, we have 33 states. All right. So a committee of 33 is going to go to the back room and, 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 and write up platforms. OK, what they do is they actually write up two platforms. All right. They write two. one of them supports slavery in the territories. It protects slavery in the territories. The other is popular sovereignty. All right. Now, the majority opinion of the 33 states is that we're going to protect slavery in the territories, right? That's the majority opinion. However, when they start voting on, on which platform they'd like to adopt, they start with the northern states first. Well, if you start with the northern states first, it's going to appear, at least through the first couple of votes, that which, which platform is going to win? Pops off, okay? Now, they start off as soon as the state you know, rolls off at that they want pops up immediately. The lead delegate from Alabama, a guy named William Yancey is going to stand up and he wants to be addressed. Every time he stands up, you know, and raises his hand, they say, Yancey, sit down. You're from Alabama. You'll get the floor when it's your turn to speak. You just got to wait for it to get down to you. First state goes pops off. Second state goes pops off. Third state goes pops off. 
And, and, and every time Yancey's up, sit down, up, sit down. Like the fourth or fifth state says, pops off. Yancey stands up and goes, I demand to be addressed right now. They say, Yancey, sit down. He goes, I will not. I demand to have the floor. They say, Yancey, sit. He doesn't. He turns around. He hits the all rise to the Alabama delegation. All of Alabama's delegates stand up. But Alabama's not alone because this is rule or ruin. Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, Florida, Arkansas, Tennessee, and Georgia all get up and walk out the door. All right? They all get up and walk out the door. All total, it's about 50 delegates. Okay? It's about 50 delegates that get up and leave, leaving 253 people. Okay? When all those southern states bolt out the door, which platform's gonna win? Pops off. Now, all those people getting up and leaving creates a problem for the Democrats. The Democrats at this time were playing by what I call the silly little two thirds rule, okay? What that means is for the Democrats, really all the way up until the Franklin Roosevelt days, the Democrats, their candidate had, a simple majority was not good enough for a, 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 a candidate to get that nomination, they had to have two thirds of the delegates. And since they all agreed on their silly little two thirds rule, when everybody was there, that number was kind of locked in. With 50 people up and gone, is this gonna be easy to get two thirds? No, all right? Stephen A. Douglas, Stephen A. Douglas is the fan favorite of the Democratic Party. Okay, he is the fan favorite of the Democratic Party, but he can get a majority. He cannot get two thirds with all those people gone. All right. And so what we're going to see is, is they're going to ballot 53 times. All right. They ballot 53 times before saying, hey, yo, this isn't going to work. We got to try something different. All right. Uh, six weeks later, six weeks later, they're going to get together in Baltimore. Okay. They're gonna to get together in Baltimore. Um, the people from those seven states, they try to show back up. They're not allowed in the door, okay? They're not allowed in the door. They amend their silly little two thirds rule to two thirds of those present. At that point, Stephen Douglas easily gets the nomination. So the Democrats are going with Stephen Douglas on a platform of? Pops off, all right? How are these seven states feeling? Pissed, all right? They're pissed. Um, those seven states are, are going to get together in Richmond, Virginia in June. They're gonna nominate J.C. Breckinridge as their candidate running on a platform that protects slavery in the territories, all right? Have the Democrats shown unity? No. Is that a winning ticket? Absolutely not. All right. Now, this is a big, big deal because what we're going to see, the Democrats are split. May uh, Republicans are going to get together in Chicago. OK, the Republicans are getting together in Chicago. All right. Um, and they're getting together at the big bomb. All right. Yo, if I ever run for politics, I'm going to host my convention at the wigwam. Because the wigwam, at the wigwam, you can literally do whatever you want at the wigwam, all right? Whatever you want can be done at the wigwam, all right? Great enthusiasm. Great enthusiasm here uh, in, in Chicago. Um, I say that 30,000 spectators are showing up. All right, 30,000 spectators are showing up, hoping to just really stand around outside the wigwam, hoping to hear or see a piece of their favorite politician's speech. All right, great enthusiasm. The Republicans know the Democrats are split. They know that in order to win, two things have to happen, okay? Two things have to happen. Number one, they have to nominate a moderate. Okay, you cannot nominate somebody who beats the abolitionist drum. All right, you gotta go with somebody who's kind of got some more free soil vibes. What is free soil? No slavery in the territory versus abolitionists who wants what? No slavery, period. 
Okay. Um, the other thing that they know that they have to do, they have to win those three key states in Murderer's Row that they lost in the last election, Pennsylvania, Indiana, and Illinois. Right? They've got to win those. Now, the, uh, the Republicans start off with their platform. Okay, Platform for the Republicans. They're going to prohibit territorial slavery. Is that abolition? Prohibiting territorial slavery. What is that? That's free soil agenda right there. Okay. That's a free soil agenda. Um, the other things that they want, let's see, they want a protective tariff. They want a homestead bill and they want to start discussing prohibition. All right. What is prohibition? No alcohol. Okay. That's what their, their platform is all about. All right. Then they get to the, um, to the candidates. Okay. They get to the candidates and, and what we've got here is, is the Republicans have this long list of, of big names. Okay. The absolute golden boy of the Republican party. This guy is William Seward. Okay. William Seward. Remember we saw him give that higher law speech from, from the compromise of 1850. Remember in, in, in response to those fugitive slave laws, he says that he will follow a higher law. What was influencing him? Abolition and second great awakening, right? Um, now, so he's your favorite. You've also got, you know, we'll see, Seward's from New York. You've got salmon, yeah, like the fish, salmon chase. Uh, he's out of Ohio. Um, he's in the future going to be a Supreme Court Chief Justice. Uh, you've got Cameron from, from Pennsylvania. You've got this long list of people. Um, the problem with all of them, none of them are moderates, all right? The Republicans literally have a list of like 14 people. All right, the one moderate on the list is all the way at the bottom, Abraham Lincoln. Now, Abraham Lincoln, he's the only moderate on the list. He's last on the list. And did he even win the last election he was in? No, but he got a little shine for being a great orator, right? Cool. Now, let's do a walk around. Let's do a walk around. Now, um, the strategy. The strategy for the candidates, all right? So, all right, it only took me, what, 22 minutes to say, yeah. Um, the strategy for the candidates, stop Seward on the first ballot, okay? Stop Seward on the first ballot. Because the way that the Republicans do this thing, okay, the way that they go about nominating their candidates is it's almost like it's a, once they establish their platform, they then vote, Okay. If somebody gets a majority on that first vote, that is their candidate, no questions asked, all right? But if somebody does not get a majority, then all of the candidates, all 14, get the opportunity to give a speech, okay? And so the, 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 the strategy here for the, uh, for the candidates here on the first ballot is to stop Seward, okay? Stop Seward on the first ballot. All right. So everybody's lined up. They're waiting to walk into the into the the the, the, the wigwam to cast their votes. They walk in and all of a sudden goo, the lights in the wigwam go out. All right. The lights in the wigwam go out. And 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 this isn't like, you know, lights like we have today where you can go on, off, on, off. Right. The lights back then. You guys ever been in like a. I don't know, like an old um, like tennis court where like the lights take like 10 minutes to warm up before they turn on. And if you don't go and twist that timer in time, it's going to take you like 10, 15 minutes. It's got to cool down and then go through the whole warm up process. Right? You guys know what I'm talking about? It's like that, but 1860s technology. Okay? Somebody hits the lights um, and then somebody suggests, yo, it's a great day to be a Republican. We're in the Windy City. We're going to start talking about prohibition. Maybe we should go out and have a good time, right? Maybe we should go out and have a good time. 
um, and, 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 you know, kind of party. We'll get back here the next day with the morning light coming in all these windows here. It doesn't even matter if the lights are on or not, you know, cause we can still roll. Okay. And so they feel good. Okay. They feel good. Everybody goes out that night to party except for two people. Okay. Everybody, but two people, the two people, David Davis and Norman Judd. Okay, David Davis and Norman Judd. David Davis and Norman Judd are gonna do work. All right, all night long, these guys are doing work. Again, if I ever run for political office, I wanna be at the wigwam, I'm going to find the graves and resurrect David Davis and Norman Judd. All right, I want those two dudes as my campaign manager. All right, David Davis and Norman Judd are Abe's campaign managers, okay? Guess who turned off the lights? They did. Yeah, they did. All right. Guess who suggested that everybody go out and party and come back the next day? They did. They did. All right. And that night while everybody's out running around partying and having a good time, like I said, David Davis and Norman Judd, they're doing work. All right. They're doing work. Um, that night they printed off 10,000 fake tickets of entry to the wigwam. All right. They print off 10,000 fake tickets of entry to the wigwam um, and give them all to Abraham Lincoln supporters. All right. Give them to them and tell them all, make sure that you're right here as soon as the gates open. Make sure you get there before the gates open because we want to ma- we want to overwhelm the ticket taker with fake tickets so that at the point that he realizes that he's been taking fake tickets, we've already got this place mobbed out. All right. Now, they also instruct everybody that they give a ticket to to yell. Okay. They instruct everybody to yell. And I'm not talking about like, yay. I'm talking about like you got front row tickets to the T Swift concert that's coming out. All right. Yo, it comes out and all of a sudden she walks out and I'll say, oh my gosh, she's real. Right. That kind of level. All right. Now, lose your mind. Okay. And again, everybody gets back and you got us the next day. You got to stop Seward on the first ballot. Okay. And so they come walking in, you know, they come walking in and the voice on, on, you know, in the room says, all right, ladies and gentlemen, we are here to cast our preliminary vote for the Republican nominee for the election of 1860 on the list. We've got from New York, William Seward, Ohio, Sam Chase. They go on and on Cameron from PA. And then finally they get to him and said, and from Illinois, Abraham Lincoln, and the place erupts. Boom! Yeah! Whoa! Toot, toot. I forgot to tell him. It's electric. It's electric. Forgot to tell you. Wigwam, you can do anything you want, right? Not only do David Davis and Norman Judd cut the lights and suggest a party, they also print out 10,000 fake tickets. They give them to yellers. They also put a freaking cannon on top of the freaking wigwam and told the jabroni on top of the roof that when you hear people losing their mind, light off a cannonball and fire that sucker into Lake Michigan. And so as the walls of the wigwam are shaking, Boats in Lake Michigan are getting bombed out, all right? It's electric, man. It's electric, and people are looking around going, whoo, I don't know what this is or who that guy is, but man, he gives me the tingles. I'm all in the feels right now, all right? Everybody cast their first vote. Seward gets the most votes. He gets the most votes, but doesn't have a majority. Guess who's in second? Yeah! Right? Electric. Now, what the value of that is with no majority 
everybody gets to give up and give a speech. And Lincoln is a great speaker. He is just going to deliver. All right. He is going to deliver a fantastic speech. And what it allows is it allows for David Davis and Norman Judd to sit back in the back room and start wheeling and dealing and trying to make negotiations. All Abraham Lincoln says is don't get me caught up in some corrupt bargain like deal. All right. Hey, Internet, you want to see a bad mullet? <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna give Wild Will a feature. I got look at that. Come on up here. Woo! Yeah! He's a Lincoln supporter. Thanks, Wild. <laughs> Join in the group chat. I hope that like, I hope Wild Will is the thumbnail that that YouTube chooses for for the the thing. That's what I hope. I hope you're the thumbnail. All right. I'll use you as the thumbnail. Yeah, just take a screenshot and just put the thumbnail. Yeah, I don't know how to do that stuff. Like, I mean, I know how to hit play and, and like be a dancing monkey on a stage. Right now, woo! Comment, like, subscribe if you haven't already done it. Smash the button. You're like my son. Like, that's like all the YouTube he watches. They're like, smash the button. It's like, God, like that's so annoying. And yet here I am finding myself doing the same thing. Yeah, third bout, Abe surges ahead, okay? Third bout, Abe surges ahead. After the third bout, Ohio changes four of its votes. Wild Will, who gets the nomination on the fourth bout? Abraham Lincoln. Yeah! Actually, just hit my funny bone on that one. That's uh, it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable. All right. Now, um, Abe gets a nod. He gets paired up with all name team member Hannibal Hamlin. Okay. He gets paired up with Hannibal Hamlin. Now, Hannibal Hamlin. Uh, uh, I mean, all name team. He's one of my faves. Um, now, let's see here. Um, there is a third party. There is a third party. What's the value of our third parties? New ideas. New ideas. This third party is called the Constitutional Union Party, okay? The Constitutional Union's party, uh, their, their, their idea, caught it. I caught it. It was about to fall off the table. I caught it. Um, Constitutional Union's idea, let's not go to war, okay? Let's not go to war. Constitutional Union is made up mostly of people on the border states because... The South has been threatening secession if who wins? The Republicans, all right? The Republicans look good. The Democrats are split. If the South actually secedes, what's the next step? War, War all right? And these people are made up of people in the border states because they know if war breaks out, where's it gonna be? Yeah, right along the Ohio River. You know, right, right on that split. Okay, that little zipper, right? Now, um, when the, when the Constitutional Union was, uh, Party was pressed, what they believed in, they said they believed in the Constitution and the Union. And when asked about slavery, they said, let's just continue to draw that Missouri Compromise line all the way to the Pacific. Okay. Um, it started to look, right? Um, well, there was a lot of sectional voting. Okay. A lot of sectional voting. The North is either going to vote for Abe or Douglas. Right. The South is either going to vote for Douglas or Breckenridge. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm about to lose it. And the border states are either going to vote for Douglas or Bell. OK. Um, it looked as though Abe was going to win this thing. Uh, Stephen Douglas starts touring the South, urging the South to not secede. All right. However, States like South Carolina are immediately going to start preparing themselves in the event that Abe does win. We take a look at the electoral map behind me. Who wins this thing? Let me get out of the... Uh... It's not a majority. Abraham. That is definitely a majority. Oh, wait, yes. I was going to say, popular vote doesn't matter because the people are... Stupid. That's right. Who elects your president? The electoral college. Yes, that's the only one we got to look at is the one up there. And who wins? Lincoln. Lincoln. Okay, Lincoln. And it's the wrong person for the South. 
right? It's the wrong person for the South. And so the South is immediately put in this position where the question is not to secede or not to secede. The question is when, all right? Now, with secession, states have to justify why they're leaving. All right. And most of the southern states are going to kind of come up with the same ideas. One of those, they're going to go all the way back to that 1798 um, Virginia and Kentucky resolutions. Remind me, who wrote Virginia and Kentucky resolutions? Thomas Jefferson and T.J. Tare and Mad Dog Madison. OK, um, those two are the ones who wrote it. They talked about that compact of states doctrine. Remember, in that document, they went back to the Treaty of Paris from 1783, where it calls the United States 13 independent states. All right. And so the compact of states doctrine said that the states came together to create the union. The union did not make the states. And so therefore the union was not a legal obligation. Another big piece that they pulled from was actually the Declaration of Independence. All right. Remember, Declaration of Independence says that it is your right, it is your duty to alter and abolish despotic governments. What's the Repu what are the Republicans all about? Abolition. Abolition. Are they in this election though? No, they're much more what? Uh, free, soil. free soil. They're much more free soil in this one. But an abolitionist party, does that threaten, is it a tyrannical threat to a region of the, the country who is, is committed to the institution of slavery? Yes. Yeah. All right. And so they're saying that because of the Declaration of Independence, we have the right to revolution. And even if secession is not elite or is not legal, it is revolutionary. And that's what makes this country great. OK, now, like I said, though, the question is not whether we secede, it's when. All right. And the South largely is divided between immediatists and separatists. OK, the immediatists say we got to get out right now. We got to get out before Abraham Lincoln takes that oath to office. All right. By by the fact that he is a Republican and the Republicans, regardless of what's in their 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 platform, because they're an abolitionist party, their election threatens the South's sovereignty, if you will. Um, that they need to get out before he takes the oath to office. All right. The other group are the cooperationists. Okay. And the cooperationists have some cooler heads in their grouping. Okay. The cooperationists say, Hey, yo, wait a second. Is Lincoln an abolitionist? No, he's, no, he's a moderate. Is the platform on, on a platform of abolition? No. So let's wait. Let's wait for Lincoln to do something that forces us to leave. All right. That's what, what they're waiting for. Now, we can already see everybody who's going to immediately get out of here. All right. Now, um, first off, all right, the election's November of 1860. As soon as the preliminary votes were counted, December of 1860, South Carolina bolts. All right. They're the first to secede. That was December of 1860. January of 61, Florida, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, and Louisiana, they're out. February of 61, Texas is gone. All right? In February of 61, once our, our dark blue states have all bolted, the southern states create the Confederate States of America. All right. They create the CSA. They're going to uh, elect the Abe Lincoln lookalike in Jeff Davis um, as, as their, their leader. And they're going to formulate their government in an eerily similar fashion to the Articles of Confederation. Why would they go after the Articles of Confederation? States, have all the power. states rights. Okay. States have more power than the nation. And that's what these people wanted. Okay. That's what these people wanted. Um, what do we know about confederacies as a whole though? How come we didn't stay with the articles of confederation? Yeah, they're inherently weak. All right. They're inherently weak. 
Um, and so the Confederacy is going to, but they're going to model themselves after this because states have more power. Now, if we take a look at, at the map, is the CSA only claiming states that have seceded? No, they're claiming everything that has what? Slaves. Slaves, right? And they're also extending this Missouri Compromise line all the way to, to California. This Cali should be like right there, all right? Now, there would be some attempt at compromise. This dude over here, J.J. Crittenden from Kentucky, is going to try to come up with a quote-unquote 13th Amendment. He's going to try to push this through, saying, yeah, come on now, people, let's not, let's not be crazy. Let's create that line all the way to the Pacific. But in a world of zero-sum politics, especially when some states have already you know, left the union, can we make a compromise? No. All right? Absolutely not. And so we're screwed. All right? That's it. When we get back in here on Monday, we'll look at the, the, the gross disparity between North and South. Um, we will crank up the Civil War all next week. All right? For all my fans on the World Wide Web, I appreciate you tuning into this 40-something minute, uh, you know, great election. Tennessee loses tomorrow. Mark my word. 41-17. He said it. He said it. He said it. Time stamp that. That's all I said. He said it. Comment, like, subscribe. Again, down in the comments down there. Tell me what kind of merch you want.